<laughs> okay, um, in this presentation, I'm going to examine truckments as material culture. Um, that is a material object that has cultural significance and symbolic meaning. I'm using like the theory of both Riard and uh, Barth and Miller. Um, furthermore, I will analyze truckments as commodities, um, that is, material objects that are bought, sold, and exchanged. Um, for those of you who don't know what truck nuts are, um, they're replicas of bull testicles that are attached to the back of a uh, truck. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll get more into what they are exactly. So I have two main goals. Um, to show the links between um, gender and the market economy, or the, or the commodification of masculinity, or how the market economy constructs gender performance through commodities. Um, I also, my second goal is to uh, show the links between gender performance, politics, and the reproduction of patriarchy, or how the politics of simple everyday practices, particularly the use of commodities, contributes to continued subordination of women. Um, the connections between truck nuts and masculinity seem obvious, but they're more uh, than just a simple phallic display of machismo. To understand truck nuts and their relationship to gender and sexuality, I'm going to briefly show some photographs slash advertisements that link automobiles with specific identities, including a certain kind of masculinity that could be called hegemonic, but I'm kind of worried about using this term because it's a debated term. Um, and it's also linked to heterosexuality and whiteness. Um, automobiles have been considered to be identity machines, and historically automobiles have been symbolic of class, and this is uh, an example of a Mercedes and a Lincoln and the mansions in the background, um, just to symbolize class. Um, they've also been markers of gender. Um, this example of the Mustang uh, represents like masculine vir virility and the um, soccer mom van and the Mary Kay pink Cadillac of the independent working women. So they're, you know, uh, contrasted. Um, automobiles and sex objects. <laughs> um, in Sex and the Automobile, David L. Lewis describes how automobiles have been associated with sex and gender since their creation. Everyone knows what takes place in the back seat. And considering the traditional roles in which automobiles and gender, it's not surprising that the type of sexuality associated with automobiles is overwhelmingly heterosexual. Okay, uh, trucks in particular have become symbols of the masculine and the phallus, particularly in the rural South. The truck phallus association is not unfamiliar to those who live in the South, where men with excessively large trucks and 30-inch flotation tires are often jokingly determined to be overcompensating for the size of the penis. <laughs> in other words, there is a masculine that is particularly white, southern, heterosexual, and expressed through automotive means. However, at the same time, such characterizations that link a man's manhood with their machines or automobiles are not exclusive to the South. Um, my research comes out of my own observations of truck nuts in Florida as they are invented in my hometown, St. Petersburg. <laughs> um, I think the next slide. Yeah, truck nuts. <laughs> the valley truck is made complete with the advent of truck nuts, which come in a variety of colors and sizes from 14 inches to 4.5 inches, replicating the swinging testicular sack of a bull they attach the trailer hitch of any automobile and cost it, the almost exclusively white male driver, anywhere from $14 to $68. Truck nuts are sometimes seen with representations of the Confederate flag, which these truck nuts have an importation of them on there, um, or, but it's usually a sticker, which also symbolizes a particularly white southern masculinity. The purpose of this next set of photographs there, is to show that truck nuts are not exclusive to rural masculinity, but have spread to urban expressions of masculinity, um, the truck as opposed to the low rider. <laughs> and since they come in a multitude of varieties, they can be attached to almost any vehicle, and the bottom picture shows the different, there's even like a little road or dirt bike <laughs> um, for a masculinizing effect. Uh, it's also interesting to know, I'm not going to go into this though here, that um, they're sold throughout the world now, including South Africa, Japan, Australia, Venezuela, Sweden, and Mexico, which is interesting because masculinity is globalizing. It's exclusively, well not exclusively now, but the Southern masculinity that's being spread, the Southern American masculinity. Um, yeah. Furthermore, in addition to being bought and sold, <laughs> 
struck us as an exchange and off-road mudding competition. In these situations, men have bought multiple pairs of truck nuts for when they get stuck in the mud and have, been, have to be pulled out by a more powerful truck, the driver of which has the ultimate control over the road, over machine, and over nature. The weaker driver gives a pair of the nuts to the driver in control, but is not fully demasculinized because he has a spare pair of truck nuts. <laughs> Thus, in the context of proving, maintaining, and reproducing straight hegemonic masculinity, men freely exchange commodified genitalia. And that's what off mud, mud roading, mudding is, off mudding, off road mudding. <laughs> and you can see the little tiny pair. <laughs> the tricks that's out. Okay. At the peak of their popularity around 2008, truck nuts have become extremely truck nuts became extremely controversial. They were particularly offensive to women drivers, although the most vocal opponents of truck nuts were drivers who were the fathers of young children. As obscene corruptors of innocent children, truck nuts have been subject of controversy all across the South, particularly in Florida, Virginia, South Carolina, and a number of other state and local governments and there have been su several successful and unsuccessful attempts at having them banned. Of the successful attempts, drivers towing truck nuts are fined between $60 and $250 and are also issued a traffic citation. These laws against the display of truck nuts resulted in critiques voiced in popular southern newspapers about constitution constitutional freedoms of speech. If analyzing the policing of truck nuts alone, it would seem that a crisis of masculinity exists with men being rendered unable to express their masculinity by making such phallic expressions illegal. Or put another way, policies against the display of truck nuts can be seen as an attack on male power and the expression of masculinity. But by analyzing the policing of truck nuts in the context of the, what a pottery, a pottery calls the social life of things, in the context of the social life of another gender auto accessory, the mud flap girl, which is usually a bumper sticker or on the mud flaps of a car, of a truck. Um, I argue that masculinity is not being threatened, but rather it is being protected. Debates and policies to ban truck nuts actually maintain the privileged position of the male body by preserving the male reproductive organs to the private world. For nearly four decades, the mud flap girl, which depicts a sexualized outline of a female nude figure, has been a common sight on Americans road, America's roads and highways. And there has only been one instance in Arizona where the mudflap girl came under legislative scrutiny. Thus, hegemonic masculinity is preserved because while women's naked, naked bodies are sexualized, commodified, and literally mudded on, the mere phallic allusion to men's sexual organs, remember this is a bull, not a human <laughs> testicle, <laughs> um, is protected and censored through efforts to keep the male member private and out of the public sphere. Truck nuts, on the other hand, have been on the road for less than five years and have sparked considerably, considerable controversy in multiple states, and including successful bans, which uh, opposition towards the mudflap girl never obtained. In contrast, the mudflap girl, um, and this, I'm talking about this uh, Wyoming library advertisement, um, she was used by the Wyoming public libraries as part of a campaign to attract readers who might not typically use the library services. And notice she's deep-breasted and holding yeah. a book. So it's, it's, it's desexualized, but not really. <laughs> um, so in conclusion, uh, truck nuts are one, symbols of masculinity, two, uh, represent the commodification of gender and sexuality, and three, when analyzed in the larger context, are shown to promote the subordination of women.